What is risk-based thinking as required in ISO 9001-2015? Hello, I'm Terry McCann. TC176, the technical committee responsible for producing ISO 9001-2015, put out a publicly available guidance document titled Risk-Based Thinking in ISO 9001-2015. This presentation is largely based on that document, which can be found at the URL shown on this slide. ISO 9001-2008 has a requirement for a documented procedure for preventive action to be done when appropriate after corrections and corrective action. The approach was a reactive response to an adverse event or nonconformity. In ISO 9001-2015, the notion of preventive action has morphed into a more proactive preventive approach to be applied in all the major processes of the quality management system, from planning through design and development, manufacturing and customer support and service. In this new incarnation, it has been called risk-based thinking or RBT. Firstly, what is risk? The answer depends on your dictionary or glossary of terms. The common or popular understanding is that where there is risk, there is a chance or some probability that something adverse will happen as an effect of pursuing a benefit or opportunity. ISO 13485 2016 for medical devices defines risk as the combination of the probability of occurrence of harm and the severity of that harm, and then points out in a note that this definition differs from that in ISO 9000-2015. According to ISO 9000, which defines the terms used in ISO 9001, risk is simply the effect of uncertainty. Effect is a deviation from what is intended and might be a positive or negative deviation. As Humpty Dumpty said to Alice in Wonderland, when I use a word it means just what I choose it to mean, neither more nor less. ISO exercises the same prerogative as Humpty Dumpty. So what then is risk-based thinking or RBT? It is worth noting that there is no definition provided in ISO 9000-2015. There is some explanation in ISO 9001-2015, Clause 0.3.3 and Appendix A.4. TC176 tells us that RBT is something we all do automatically in everyday life. For example, if I wish to cross a road, I look for traffic before I begin. I will not step in front of a moving car. That sounds like common sense, but the American Center for Disease Control tells us that in 2013, 4,735 pedestrians were killed in traffic crashes in the United States alone. That averages to about 13 per day. Additionally, more than 150,000 pedestrians were treated in emergency departments for non-fatal crash-related injuries in 2013, averaging to 411 per day. As someone said, common sense is not as common as we like to assume. I suppose that is why TC176 decided to spell out where to apply RBT in the system of processes making up a quality management system, QMS. Not all the processes of a quality management system hold the same level of risk in terms of the organization's ability to meet its quality objectives. Some need more careful and formal planning and controls for risk than others. For example, to cross the road, I may go directly or I may use a nearby footbridge. Which process I choose will be determined by planning beforehand and considering the risks. In ISO 9001, opportunity is not merely the positive side of risk. An opportunity is a set of circumstances which makes it possible to do something. 
taking or not taking an opportunity then presents different levels of risk. For example, crossing the road directly gives me an opportunity to reach the other side quickly, but if I take that opportunity, there is an increased risk of injury from moving cars. RBT considers both the current situation and possible scenarios for change. For example, analysis of this road situation shows opportunities for improvement such as a subway leading directly under the road, or pedestrian traffic lights, or diverting the road so that the area has no traffic. As mentioned previously, ISO 9001-2015 requires RBT to be applied in all the major processes of the QMS, from planning through design and development, manufacturing and customer support and service. It also requires RBT to be applied in the planning and formulation of the quality management system itself, beginning with the requirement for top management to identify internal and external parties with an interest in the effectiveness of the QMS to achieve desired results for products and services. For the same reason, top management is to identify positive and negative issues that present opportunities and risks that are relevant to the quality of products and services. These all need to be taken into account when planning and formulating the quality management system. Remember, there is no requirement for RBT to be formalized into a documented process, nor is there any stipulation as to retained documentation or records. However, we need to be prepared to present some form of evidence that we have engaged appropriately in risk-based thinking. This does require some forethought and planning. We continue to use our pedestrian crossing the road to illustrate how to apply RBT. Firstly, identify what your risks are. This depends on our organizational context. For example, if I cross a busy multi-lane road with many fast moving cars, the risks are not the same as if the road is small with very few moving cars. It is also necessary to consider such things as weather, visibility, personal mobility and agility, and specific personal objectives. Understand your risks. What is acceptable? What is unacceptable? What advantages or disadvantages are there to one process over another? For example, my objective is that I need to safely cross a road to reach a meeting at a given time. It is unacceptable to be late. It is even more unacceptable to be injured. Reaching my goal more quickly must be balanced against the likelihood of injury. It is more important that I reach my meeting uninjured than it is for me to reach my meeting on time. It may be acceptable to delay arriving at the other side of the road by using a footbridge if the likelihood of being injured by crossing the road directly is high. I analyze the situation. The footbridge is 200 meters away and will add time to my journey. The weather is good, the visibility is good, and I can see that the road does not have many cars at this time. I decide that Walking directly across the road carries an acceptably low level of risk of injury and will help me reach my meeting on time. Plan actions to address the risks by asking, how can I avoid or eliminate the risk? How can I mitigate risks? For example, I could eliminate risk of injury caused by being hit by a vehicle if I use the footbridge, but I have already decided that the risk involved in crossing the road is acceptable. Now I plan how to reduce either the likelihood or the impact of injury. I cannot reasonably expect to control the impact of a car hitting me. I can reduce the probability of being hit by a car. I plan to cross at a time when there are no close cars moving towards me and so reduce the likelihood of an accident. 
I also plan to cross the road at a place where I have good visibility. Then implement the plan. Take action. For example, I move to the side of the road, check there are no barriers to crossing. I check there are no cars coming. I continue to look for cars whilst crossing the road. Check the effectiveness of the action. Does it work? For example, I arrive at the other side of the road unharmed and on time. That's good. This plan worked and undesirable effects have been avoided. Learn from experience and improve. For example, I repeat execution of the plan over several days at different times and in different weather conditions. This gives me data to understand that changing context, like time, weather, volume of cars, directly affects the effectiveness of the plan and increases the probability that I will not achieve my objectives, being on time and avoiding injury. Experience teaches me that crossing the road at certain times of day is very dangerous because there are too many cars. To limit the risk, I revise and improve my process by using the footbridge at these times. I continue to analyze the effectiveness of the processes and revise them when the context changes. I also continue to consider innovative opportunities such as, can I move the meeting place so that the road does not have to be crossed? Can I change the time of the meeting so that I can cross the road when it is quiet? Can we meet electronically? Clause 0.3.2 of the introduction to the standard provides a strong recommendation to apply the Plan Do Check Act cycle to all processes and to the quality management system as a whole. Whenever planning is done, it needs to identify and address risks and opportunities. Similarly, risk is implicit whenever the words determine, suitable or appropriate are mentioned, as these are all planning stage concepts, even if the planning is only brief and informal. Thus, RBT is called for where appropriate in all the requirements clauses of ISO 9001-2015. Clause 4. In determining its QMS processes, the organization is required to identify and address its risks and opportunities. Clause 5. Top management is required to promote awareness of risk-based thinking and determine and address risks and opportunities that can affect product or service conformity. Clause 6. The organization is required to identify risks and opportunities related to QMS performance and take appropriate actions to address them. Clause 7. The organization is required to determine and provide necessary resources as appropriate. Remember, risk is implicit whenever the words determine, suitable or appropriate are mentioned. Clause 8. The organization is required to plan and manage its operational processes as appropriate. Clause 9. The organization is required to monitor, measure, analyze and evaluate effectiveness of actions taken to address the risks and opportunities. Clause 10. The organization is required to correct, prevent or reduce undesired effects and improve the QMS and update risks and opportunities. Wherever there is a requirement for records or documentation to be retained, consider including some evidence of risk identification and evaluation having been performed, but only if this will add value for the organization. Under the requirements of Clause 6.1, the organization is responsible for its application of risk-based thinking and the actions it takes to address risk, including whether or not to retain documented information as evidence of its determination of risks. There is thus no requirement to keep records of RBT activities 
as is clearly stated in Appendix A of the standard. Applying risk-based thinking greatly increases the likelihood of realizing the following benefits. Improved governance, a proactive culture of improvement, enhanced statutory and regulatory compliance, greater consistency in quality of products and services, improved customer confidence and satisfaction. Successful companies will have the common sense to intuitively incorporate risk-based thinking into their quality management. In summary then, risk-based thinking is not new. It's something you do already as common sense in an ongoing manner. RBT ensures greater knowledge of risks and improves preparedness to deal with them. It increases the likelihood of reaching objectives and reduces the probability of undesirable outcomes. Finally, RBT makes a proactive habit from the old proverb, prevention is better than cure. I would like to thank TC176 for making their guidance on risk-based thinking freely available. More publicly available information from TC176 can be found at the URL on this slide. I'm Terry McCann. My company is TCMC Quality Management Services. If you have any questions about risk-based thinking or concerns about transition to ISO 9001-2015, I would love to hear from you. Leave a comment or go to the Contact Us page on my website or send an email to terry.mccann at tcmc-qms.ca terry.mccann at tcmc-qms.ca